in this crazy world. Hello, my name's Eddie Hages, and this is the Eddie Hages Tiny House Experience. The tiny house that you see behind me is what I've designed over a five-month period and then built for 13 months, and I completed about two months ago, and I've been living in it full-time since. It came in at just under $40,000, mostly due to above-average materials, but I did spend a couple thousand dollars on some professional services, and most of that was for plumbing. And I thought I'd give you a tour. The outside of the house, the exterior siding is cedar bevel siding. And I chose two different stains for the outside to kind of break up the monotony of a single stain and to give this tiny house some character. The windows are all aluminum clad from Geldwin. There's 10 windows and one skylight up top. Skylight up top is from a company called Focro, and that's an egress rated skylight. The roofing material is a product called Ondavia, inspired by the tiny home giant journey people. And I really like how the roofing material blends into the mahogany red of the cedar siding to kind of draw everything together. This area in the back are my utility sheds on the hitch side and to the left is where my water comes in and it goes through a pressure regulator. I have a water meter to monitor my use. There's a main shutoff valve and then it goes through two water filters before entering my house. All of the, the plumbing water is um, done with copper pipe. This middle, middle section is where my propane canisters are. There's room in there for two propane canisters. And in the middle back, there's a, a little regulator that when one of the propane canisters runs out, it switches it over to the other. So you have continual propane gas coming into your house at all times. And on the right hand side is my electrical panel. So. This is a 30 amp rated service. There's five 15 amp breakers. This cable over here is 30 amp rated cable that's hardwired into my box. On the bottom left is where my low voltage components are. There is a transformer and a rectifier in there that connects to my main power box. To the right of that is a service outlet. And above the panel box is an energy meter that connects to a home automation controller that you'll be seeing later on in this tour. Moving around to the side of my house. Notice that there are a couple vents. That's for my bath fan vent. There's a range vent and the vent for my composting toilet. And underneath my trailer in the center is where my wastewater exits out, exits out of my tiny house. And that's a standard RV type valve that you'll see on most RVs. And I have this connected to an outlet that goes into the septic system of where I'm renting right now. And also conveniently, there was a 30 amp pedestal. So I pretty much got to just come here and plug in and easily was able to set up my tiny house and start living in this place. So this deck was more or less the last thing that I completed. That was about a month ago. It's five feet wide, eight feet long. The lakes come out off and it will fit into the back of a full size uh, pickup truck. Everything is freestanding there. Nothing's bolted into the house. Approaching the front deck. And this is where I've really, really scored at the place that I found. This overlooks the desert in East San Diego. And I just feel in so much gratitude to come out here and witness this sense of space whenever I, I go to work in the morning and when I come home in the evening just kind of hang out and look over that mountain range. I do have a light on 
uh, this side of the house above the door, that light is also tied into a home automation system and it comes on at sunset so I'm able to come into a well-lit house. And welcome to Mikasa. And I'll step back and start with my flooring material. This is natural color bamboo. At the entranceway, I found a nice little transition piece to break up my foyer from my main living area. And then it moves into tiger stripe bamboo and it goes through the kitchen. To the right here, I have a, a curtain covering up one of my closets. It's a pretty small closet, about two feet wide. And then this area opens up into my living room. I didn't have too many things that I was trying to accomplish with this tiny house, but one is I wanted to make it feel as open as possible. And these, the seating over here, this actually folds up into the wall. And this main dining room table also all folds up into the wall underneath this monitor that I have here. And there is a Roku that's hooked up to the monitor so I can watch Netflix and YouTube and stream some other channels. So whenever I have these both folded up, it's about seven foot three inches wide and I can do yoga or break out a massage table and just kind of do the thing I do. This little chair over here was inspired by a friend of mine, Mariah Hoffman, and this top breaks off and these two pieces of wood break down too and nothing is fastened together. It's just uh, held together by itself. Pretty cool little design. Moving into the kitchen, you'll see uh, an NV wall mount heater connected to my cabinets. My cabinets are oak cabinets and the tops are maple butcher block and these were uh, helped design and build by my friend Steve Payne who worked as a professional cabinet maker for a number of years and I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. This over here is an Atwood 3 range propane burner, pretty standard, some backsplash material and then I have a range hood vent up here. And this cabinet that you see built around it was done by my buddy Joseph Plummer who does wood art and I gave him a bunch of my scraps and he stained them different colors and I think it really came out excellent. Moving to the other side of the kitchen, I have some open shelving for glasses, cups, plates. And moving down onto the kitchen countertop, have some more artwork over here. It's called Be Careful With That Knife, Eugene. You will not chop your finger off on my clock in this tiny house. And this little uh, cutting board comes off as well. And this is a full depth sink. I think it's nine and a half inches. And I really, really love the depth of the sink. It allows me to do dishes. I could throw them in there, I could put this top back on and just kind of let them dry, I don't even have to dry all the time. Underneath the sink is a 5.5 square foot refrigerator. This is the largest refrigerator that I was able to find. Not much in there now, it's the end of the week, got to do my groceries today. Um, very small freezer, only a half square foot. Hasn't been a problem for me, um, but this is uh, the largest refrigerator I was able to find in under the counter, um, in a, on the under counter model. Underneath the sink over here is my on-demand propane hot water heater, and this is made by Precision Temp, and it actually vents through the floor, so I didn't have to make an opening in the wall. I also have my my trash over there. Moving on to this corner, this is my main clothing closet over here. And I have some hospital curtain track that comes up and around 
This is regular curtain that I got at a hobby store that I cut and uh, hemmed in place. Over to the right here, I found a little clothes hamper from Ikea and I actually built that shelf around that clothes hamper. And this curtain comes all the way out and can also be used as a privacy door for the bathroom. As a matter of fact, I actually use that way more often than the door that you see behind it. And the door that you see behind it is another creative art piece that I came up with. I uh, stained it that dark color brown and then I took a Dremel and Dremeled out the other areas that you, that you see there and very happy with it. And even the Dremel tool up close, you can see all the texture of the Dremel tool, which I think is uh, just super cool. This is on a, a barn slider. Slides to the left. And hey, how's it going? And this is a this is another piece that I had to build this uh, medicine cabinet. Actually, pretty much everything in this house I had to, to build because it is hard to find things to the right dimensions. Um, it's the inside of the medicine cabinet. Pray see that I'm pretty much minimalist. Only the essentials. Moving to my right is my shower and the shower walls are made out of galvanized roofing material. And at the bottom is a 32 inch by 32 inch shower pan which is more than enough room for me to comfortably take a shower in this place. It's been working out very well. In the middle here is a small little sink that I found. It took about two months to find that sink. And to the left is uh, some shelving for toilet paper and other toiletries. And then, as many of you know what that is, Nature's Head Composting Toilet. I've been using it for two and a half months now. No problems. Uh, I would recommend it if you're going to go that route. And here's the view of the front of my house from my bathroom. Moving along. This over here is some storage. These all come out. And um, there's uh, no hinges or anything like that on them. And it's also the seating for that side of the table. As well as the first two steps going up to my loft. So there's the first two. That, that top little compartment actually slides out completely. The third step to get up to my loft is the countertop and then there's three to go up. On the left side of my loft I built out the loft just a little bit to hold that portable AC unit which is a lot bigger than I thought it would be uh, but it does cool down the house fairly quickly. And I'll move up to the loft where all the magic happens. And uh, the loft is uh, fairly spacious. I have a, a couple inches of headroom up here. Don't feel claustrophobic. A couple shelves on both sides. The shelving over there has my internet router and my home control system. The home control system is a very edge. It's connected to about five of my lights my outside light, my my main fan up here over the main area and also my energy meter that I showed you in my electric panel box. And at the tops of these long walls are some multicolor LED tape light. A little hard to see the crown molding over there but there's crown molding on that side and this side and it's a product from Philips called Philips U. And there's a ton of apps online for the product. And it's super cool to play with the apps. I actually have a, an app to sync music. I can rave out in here if I want, uh, set different moods. It's been a really cool uh, little product. And across the way is my storage loft. You'll see in the back there a a fresh air exchange unit of ventilation uh, with the top of the tiny house and below that sitting on the loft is a uh, telescoping ladder 
which makes thing makes it really easy to stow away. I didn't have to build another ladder and kind of constantly moving around with it and it's more than adequate. I'd highly recommend buying a telescoping ladder if um if you don't want to buy a ladder or just make one and have it in the space. So that's pretty much for the tour. One other thing I wanted to mention is this is my certification piece of paper um, saying that I built to the same codes that RVs are built to. I got this certification through Pacific West Associates and they, uh, they go by ANSI 119.5 and some other electrical codes. This house will be sold at the end of the year. This is part of a two year experiment that uh, I'm gonna live in it for the rest of the year and then sell it at the, at the end of the year. If you look at the links below, you'll see links to my website where you can buy plans that I built this house to and designed. I'm a CAD manager and I've been a drafting professional for about the last 20 years. So thanks for coming along. Check out my website, plenty of free content. And best of luck if you're gonna build or live in a tiny house. Thanks. Cause all we need is the power of love, so we'll rise up above and set our souls free. You ain't got nothing on me. I'll say you ain't got nothing on me. Oh no, no.